The engine's still running. Now, these disappearances occurred 500 miles apart, but tonight some people are asking, could they be connected? Phoenix Colden, a 23-year-old woman in St. Louis, last seen December 18th, sitting in her car, talking on her cell phone one minute. The next minute, she's gone. Her car found running 17 miles away. Then in Atlanta, 36-year-old Stacy English disappears December 26th, the day after Christmas, after an argument with a male friend. Her car found 12 miles away again. The engine running, car abandoned. No sight of the woman. The parents are desperate for any information. Please, please, anyone, if you found anything, come forth now. We need our daughter home. We need our daughter home. My heart goes out to both sets of parents, and we're trying to find solutions here and answers. Uh, her friend, one of the last people to see her, was Robert Kirk, a male friend. He's from St. Louis. Police say Kirk has cooperated and is not a suspect. Um, now, you take a look at these two cases, you got to say, this, the similarities, the coincidences are creepy. Uh, I want to go out to my very, very special guests tonight, Goldia and Lawrence Colden, the parents of missing Phoenix Colden. First of all, I want to say that our hearts go out to you. Uh, we know that you're going through a hellish time right now, and we want to be of help. We want to help answer unanswered questions. We want to put your daughter's face out there. We want to get some answers, uh, both from the authorities and uh, just for maybe people at large. They're going to see your daughter's face, which we're going to put up right now, and we're going to show it throughout this conversation. Now, uh, I want to uh, ask you, uh, Goldia, tell us about the last moment that you saw your daughter on the phone, in the car, outside the house. Tell us about that. She was sitting in her car in the driveway. And the way our house is made, when I passed the front windows, I could see the car, the back of the car, in the driveway. And I thought she was probably just sitting out there talking on the phone as she normally does. And then what happened? Then I think I went in my room or in the basement. I did not see her leave. Her dad saw her leave. All right. Well, Lawrence, you saw her pull out, pull away and back out of the 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 driveway and, the driveway. and drive off. OK, yes, so she I just did. drove off. Yes, yeah, she had been in the back of the house uh, shooting hoops. And she came home, she came in the house, put the basketball away, and went and sat in, the, in her vehicle. And approximately 3 p.m., she backed out of the driveway, and she, she drove off. Well, uh, there, there's, there's nothing really to say about that. It's not like she left anything in the driveway. She just pulls her car out of the driveway and drives off, and she's never seen again. Now, again, this is the St. Louis case. There's an Atlanta disappearance. They're 500 miles apart, but the cars in both cases were found abandoned with their engines running. Both women disappeared. Let me say it again. From their homes and their cars were found abandoned with the engines running. But here's another weird parallel. Both cars were found and impounded just hours after the women went missing, but cops did not make the connection until much later. In my opinion, this is outrageous. The cars were found abandoned. They were impounded by authorities. But the investigators on the case did not connect the dots, even though the families called and said, my daughter's missing, and this is a description of her car. Um, Lawrence, you, you called police and you told them, my daughter is gone. And this is the car she was last seen in. What's your reaction to the fact that cops impounded that car very quickly, but didn't make the connection that the car they were looking for was in their impound lot for, I don't know how long, days? It was in the impound lot for two weeks before we found the car. We reported our daughter missing the following day, which would be the 19th. We called the St. Louis County Police Department and an officer came out to take the report, which was, should have been about 6 o'clock on the 19th, would have been Monday evening. We didn't find that car for two weeks. It was in the impound lot 
And only through the diligence of a close friend did we find that car. Well, I think that's outrageous. And I want to bring in former FBI agent Steve Moore. Uh, I, I read both in both disappearances, the one in Atlanta and the one in St. Louis. It's a very similar situation. The cops had the car impounded and they didn't make the connection that these are the cars belonging to the missing women. Now, I read yeah. somewhere that that in one case they they said, oh, well, we looked around our impound lot and didn't see it. Don't they keep a list? Hello. Did anybody ever hear of computers? Don't you keep a list and write down the, the name of the car, the model, the make, the color, yada, yada, so that when somebody calls and says, my daughter's missing and she was last seen in this car, that they can look at a list and see what's in the impound lot and see if it matches? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and from my reading of the case, what happened in one case is the te detectives didn't check. Um, and in the other case, the detectives checked, but whoever impounded the car didn't list it on NCIC. NCIC or, or whatever state uh, uh, database they're using is uh, puts all those cars right there and you'll get a computer hit if you check. If you don't put it in, you don't get a hit. If you don't check, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I don't want their whole investigations to be judged by one mistake but that no, is but a here's big the problem mistake. the problem steve moore is that the police have said there is no connection between these two missing women but I don't now do i trust that when they can't even find the car that's in their impound lot do i trust the police to say there's no connection between these two cases i don't know if there is or not i have no idea but given that they couldn't even find the car that was in their impound lot i don't have a lot of confidence in anything they say I can now, understand. I, 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 go ahead. Well, one of the last people to see Stacy English, who was the woman who disappeared in Atlanta, was her friend Robert Kirk from St. Louis. Now, police say he's been cooperating fully. They are not calling him a suspect. They say they would like to talk to him more. His lawyer has issued a statement saying it's very irresponsible for people to suggest there's a connection between these two cases just because he happens to be from St. Louis. Um, also, uh, he says, clearly, they're doing their homework. I'm happy with the work they're doing. They're verifying the things that my client said, talking to other people to corroborate that this young lady had some issues. We're talking about Stacy English. She did have some issues. We're going to get to that in a second. But here's what Stacy's mother had to say about this uh, man that she had a fight with uh, the evening, just hours before she went missing. Listen to this. He was cooperative. He was uh, talking with us. And to uh, his, his his statement to us was that she asked him to leave and she he did leave. All right. Now, this male friend of the woman who vanished in Atlanta and another friend say that Stacy, the woman who disappeared, was acting strangely right before she went missing, quoting the Bible, talking about the end of the world. And Robert Kirk even says that Stacy asked him if he was the devil or Satan before she kicked him out. Uh, her parents were asked about that as well and essentially said, Michelle Sagona, that, well, uh, yes, her daughter has had some problems in the past, that she did attempt suicide at one point, uh, and she is on medication, but that she's also very religious. So her quoting biblical scriptures uh, shouldn't be taken out of context. What do you know, Michelle Sagona, investigative reporter? Here's what I can tell you is that I've spoken with investigators, not just in Stacy's case, but also in Phoenix's case. And that what they tell me is that although, Jane, on the on the surface, there appear to be many similarities, they are definitely not ruling those out. At this time, they don't have evidence to link those together. What they are telling me is that they are moving forward in both investigations, investigating these as missing persons, not as abductions as a, at this point. Um, they did say that, and I have the incident report right here in front of me, Stacy's uh, frame of mind was a little bit different than Phoenix's. Not that that makes any difference. She's still a missing person. We still need to find her. Um, but just as you mentioned, that there was some odd behavior and that the person who was visiting her, the male friend, he did in fact leave the apartment around 22.30, around 10.30 that night. And then she was reported missing on the 31st. Her car was found on December 27th. Yes. Now, in well, Phoenix's case... Her vehicle was found only three hours later in Illinois, just over the state lines uh, in East St. Louis. That East St. Louis Police Department handled that case. So that's why there was a little bit of delay in connection there. Yeah. And again, uh, the attorney for Mr. Kirk, uh, uh, Scott Rosenblum, says that uh, they're actually expected to clear him in the near future. And we want to uh, 
make it very clear he's not a suspect and his attorney or he is invited on any time to give his opinion and weigh in on this. But Lawrence, in the case of your daughter, Phoenix Colden, missing in St. Louis, do you think that it's foul play? Yes, I do think it's foul play. Phoenix had no reason to run away from home. Phoenix was loved by her parents and her whole family, and we have no reason to even think that she would want to run away from home. And I don't think a runaway never takes anything with them when they leave home. She had things that she could use, things that she could sell to keep running if she wanted to run away, but she took nothing with her, so why would she run away? So. Well, I want to tell you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Colden, we are going to stay on top of your daughter's disappearance, try to solve it. We're going to call the authorities every day. We're going to keep your daughter's face out there. Our hearts go out to mm. you. And be strong. Thank you. And, and keep looking for answers. Tell us May anything that you learn will bring you back on immediately. Thank you. May Thank I you. Say so, ask her, what happened?